EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Indianapolis Colts. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On first and 10, it's ETN. We'll get this up to about the 44. How about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D tackle position in order to make that play. Here's a second and eight. Here's Lawrence to throw. Caught by Jones. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Yard pickup. First down, Jacksonville. Straight ahead, ETN. A little juke. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On first down, right back to ETN. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Well, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? From the 31, here's a second and eight. ETN once more. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. On third down, Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here, just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Jacksonville. Evan Ingram, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars are on the board first here this afternoon. McManus's point after is good. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it as we resume action. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. A 
Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 24. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Partner, we always talk about how important third down is. But I think first down is equally important because everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they are able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Now Minshew. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. First and ten, Taylor now. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 43 yards rushing so far, and this is just their first possession. They've got a new set of downs here. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Throwing on first down is Minshew. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. Second and five. Here's Minshew. Hits his target to tight end, Mo Alley Cox. A five-yard pass on first down and another five-yard connection there. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Minshew, first and ten. Throw going to be caught left side here by Granson. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. This second and four. Again, Minshew looking to throw. And he's got his target. It's caught for a close touchdown. Josh Downs, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. After nearly 30 minutes of football, that touchdown puts us in a position where if they make the extra point, we're right back to even before we start the second half. Extra point by Gain is up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And they've got a little under 40 seconds to go if they want to try to put something together here. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. This one caught by Ridley. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Here's second and three. Here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Play action. It's Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. They go play action with Lawrence. Pass incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's second and ten. Now Lawrence. Looking to throw Lawrence. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. And that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Back deep for the Colts, Isaiah McKenzie. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And the Colts about to go on offense one final time in this first half. And they'll have time for one play. That's it. Three seconds to go before intermission. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the Pee Wee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. 
Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. That's a good start to the ball game. Maybe a little bit of a tone setter offensively. They come out throwing right away, and it's an early completion and a quick first down. Now Minshew on first and ten. And now the ball's out. Fumbled near midfield. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably tell Russ his training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. It's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And Taylor going to pick up the Colts first down as he'll get this down to the 36. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. Minshew sets to throw. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up second down. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion and would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from 14 yards out. And the Colts have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 of the 22-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. Well, Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? 
Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. This is second and eight. Back now in Indianapolis. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. And it was stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Now Lawrence. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down of the process. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him picking up the first down. On first down, Lawrence. Complete to Washington. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the Colts 42-yard line. Now Lawrence to throw. They'll get this out to the flat for ETN. Sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Lawrence going to throw again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Here's Lawrence. They'll find a man over the middle. It's Washington. They drive some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Now second and four. Lawrence. Side. I'm starting to wonder here, are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield, and they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw hold in by Washington. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. They'll come up now on second down. Throwing now, Lawrence. And he'll get it right back to Washington. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game.
Here's first and ten. Back to throw. Lawrence. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as the kick's away here. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked his special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. On second down, it's Taylor. And this is not going to be what they needed. They get a few here, but now third down as the clock runs. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, here's Taylor. So he off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. So the Jaguars going to get possession of the football first here in this overtime session as the kick is away. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as these guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And they'll start on the ground, ETN. Ooh, the juke. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So from the 36 now, first and 10. First down, Jacksonville. thrown quickly out to Jones. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Lawrence will throw. A short throw to Ingram. And he'll take this from 147 yard line to the other. A gain of six. Back-to-back -back completions, and that puts them in enemy territory. And we're always looking for that elusive term, momentum, aren't we? And I think they're building it with the back-to-back -back completions. Now they feel like they can either take a shot or continue to build it the way that they're doing now. Safe throws, get it to their playmakers, and see what happens. Meanwhile, the 
throw here is complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 37. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Etienne up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Here's Lawrence to throw. He completes it to Ridley. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 15-yard line. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguar. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead is now 21-14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 18. Now a first throw here in overtime. Pass complete to Alley Cox. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn upfield and gain any yardage. Second down and six now. Minshew. Finding Pittman. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he works for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Here's Minshew. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Now a nice throw here right side. He holds it in. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And how about that? In a game that's had just about everything, how's that for an answer? Remember, in the past, this game would be over already. But that's a huge play there to give him a fighting chance to go down and possibly tie this game. Now Minshew. That's going to be caught by Ali Cox. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five.
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Minshew. Touchdown, Colts! Gay is on for the point after. He's got it, and we're on tied at 21. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Now Lawrence on first down. Jones has it. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And that nearly picked off. Oh, that would have been a big INT here in overtime. Instead, they'll get another shot on third down. And here in overtime, that had the potential to be the definition of a game-changing interception. But he couldn't find a way to pull it in. And that's a disappointment there. On third down, Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's Logan Cook now. And in double overtime, this needs to be a good one. McKenzie now to return it. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roll through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And ultimately, this won't go for much, maybe a couple, but boy, he showed off that make you miss ability that certainly is in his arsenal. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front. They won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down, another run with Taylor. And not much room to speak of. They'll get about three up to the 41. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here is third and five. Now Minshew. That's complete to Pierce. And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He did not have a catch to that moment. Pretty good time for his first one, though, here in OT. I would agree with that. And just think about how they had to cycle through all the play sheets, right? Tried to find ways to get a lot of people the football. 
In this case, as you said, he hadn't had a catch all game. Now they find him in a key moment. Really well done. An opening there on that first down run as he gets his forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. On second down, Minshew. A short one there, caught by Granson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. He's taken down at the 33 yard line. A game of four. It's now second and six. So the OT clock hits zero, and we're still not done. We'll switch sides and need at least one more OT to decide it after this. Now a second and six. Again, it's Taylor. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars' 28. Devin Boyd on the stop. Brings up third down. From the gun, it's Taylor. What a nice move. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. A lot more was on the line in this one than just defending your home field, CD. They defend their home field against a division rival and get the victory, so this one feels a little extra special. It has to, right? There's always just a little more emphasis on games like this. Everyone talks about playing each game the exact same way, but you and I both know that is not true. Division rivals, you want to take care of business, not just at home, but against a team that you really don't want.